Welcome to a special edition of Corporate Governance at LSE. My name is Tom Kirchmeier and I have with me here Moki from the Finance Department. Welcome Moki. Thank you for having me. Today we talk about proxy, proxy statements. Um, you've given your students, and that's why it's a special edition, because we will hear later on what they have to say about it, um, some questions about proxy statements. But why should we care about it in the first place? Proxy voting is the primary means for shareholders to express their opinion, to exercise their control rights that come with their equity. So that's why it's important for those students to understand how proxy voting works. Uh, and it's important for shareholders to know how they exercise their control rights. And it is important for firms to understand um, what the shareholders actually want them to do. It's important in this respect that shareholders have a democratic right to vote, like we vote in Parliament. It's important for firms, you said, but why in particular? Can they really make a difference? Yeah, if you're a large shareholder, it may be easier to just talk to the firm itself. But in the UK, in the US, in many countries, we have um, a lot of dispersed shareholdership. And then it becomes impossible for all one million of shareholders to phone up the firm and tell them what they want to do. And that's why we need an aggregating mechanism like voting, so that shareholders can ex express their opinion, but also that uh, they can make decisions. Mm. But do shareholders use their right? They actually do. So. Participation rates, for example, in the US are around 75%, so uh, arguably quite high if you compare it with political elections. Mm -hmm. What are the main issues around proxy statements? Proxy voting has usually two parts. They are the proposals made by the management. The management has to propose certain things. They cannot just uh, use their discretion on everything, so they have to ask shareholders for permission uh, if there is any dilution involved. So about, um, that's about, uh, especially about equity issuances. Now, shareholders themselves can also bring forward proposals, or resolutions we call them in the UK, and uh, those can have a wide range of issues, from business-related uh, issues to governance-related issues to uh, CSR-related issues that shareholders, some shareholders care about. Thanks, Moki. Let's see what the students have to say. So I'm sure you know that I'm from Japan. So I'm taking the real estate and economic finance course here. I'm Maximilian Schmidl. I'm from Germany. Um, I'm doing the law and accounting program here at LSE at master's level. Thank you very much. So in this class, uh, you did an exercise where you looked at actual companies. So can you say a little bit about which company did you choose? So actually, we chose the applied material co corporation. So it is like doing the process it is, it is producing some like uh, manufacturing facilities for the big the players like uh, Intel, Samsung, something like that. They don't want to inter no, they want to produce like the, some of the silicon tips and the solar panels, something like that. So a couple of weeks ago, Applied Materials had the AGM and there was, I believe, one shareholder proposal and you had a look at this. Do you want to tell us a little bit more about uh, this proposal? Well, this basically um, was a shareholder proposal by um, a man named Kenneth Steiner, who proposed proxy access um, for applied materials company as a bylaw amendment, meaning that he wanted the bylaws to be changed to the effect that uh, shareholders, rather than only the board, would have a right to propose um, directors for election. So proxy access has been in the news lately quite a lot. Do, why is that such a controversial topic? Is, or why is that important at all? Generally speaking, if you, if you go back to agency theory, um, it's really about making directors accountable to shareholders. Yeah? And um, I think proxy ma ma uh, access, or meaning that you allow shareholders to propose their own candidates for the board, might really be, in theory at least, a strong instrument to align the interests of shareholders with those of directors because arguably you would expect a person that you yourself nominate to be quite loyal to you or to act in your interest right because otherwise you would not you would not propose him to be elected as a director in the first place so we might see proxy access in theory as really a good instrument for shareholder control and for shareholders to make sure that they um, that the board of directors is actually accountable to them and why might that be controversial? What could be reasons against proxy access? Well, I mean, we can argue that on the one hand, 
it, it's not that board members are taken out of the air. So there is quite a rigorous nomination um, procedure that is already in place. So you, normally in, in many large listed companies, you would expect to have a nomination committee that um, would actually go through a thorough process before nominating candidates for the board. So we could argue that this is already a check in place to make sure that those directors who get, um, who get proposed for election are actually very suitable candidates. And if you look at the directors and the nomination committee or the procedure in place at Applied Materials, do you think that they have a good process in place already? Do you like the directors or is there need for change? It's very hard to say that it is very, you know, that the current the member of the boarding is uh, it's very appropriate for the company to read because basically for the last maybe two or three years performance is quite good. I mean, they increased uh, you know, the cash flow very quickly after the financial crisis. We are not the ultimate people to judge whether directors of applied materials are suitable or not. I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't say that I'm able to reach an ultimate opinion on that, but if you have a brief browse through their CV, you can say that these are really quite distinguished people and who seem to have relevant experience. So there are people with financial experience, people with technology experience, mm -hmm. people with research experience. So this seems to be quite a diverse team really that um, yeah. should be able to to understand what's going on at the company and should be able to to constrain management or to challenge management in, in some respect. Mm -hmm. Now a lot of the debate about proxy access is about the details about which levels um, should be in place, etc. So in this case, if you look at applied materials, proxy access uh, policy, and uh, compare it with the proposal, what is your verdict on whether the proposal makes sense? There, there are two aspects to this. The first is, I would say simply, from an economic perspective, the, the second one is from a legal perspective. So if we start with the proposal itself, that's what I call economic perspective, we can see that the pr proposal is in essence very similar to, um, to a proxy access that Applied Materials has already adopted before. And the second aspect is then from a legal perspective. So what was proposed here is a bylaw amendment. Corporate law in the US is largely state law. I mean, there are some aspects where federal law has an impact, but for the, for the thing we are concerned with here, it's exclusively state law. So we have to look at the state of incorporation. Applied materials here is like 50% of all large US companies, a Delaware company, meaning that we have to look at Delaware uh, Corporation. Now, Delaware Corporation law provides for two constitutional documents. So basically, you can amend the certificate of incorporation only if you have board approval and shareholder approval. Mm -hmm. However, the bylaws, by contrast, this, these can be amended unilaterally by either the shareholder body or the board. And now, important to understand is here that uh, Mr. Steiner proposed this proxy access as a bylaw amendment. This means that even if shareholders voted for it, and even if the bylaws were changed to that effect, the board could still unilaterally simply undo this provision in the bylaws. So, I mean, of course, you can argue that there are some reputational constraints, for instance, so that the board would not override a bylaw that is actually wanted by the majority of shareholders. But from a strictly technical perspective, um, given that the board always has this option to undo the change, I would doubt whether it's actually highly effective. Now, if you look at the outcome of the AGM, this proposal was rejected, but quite closely, so 60% of shareholders voted against it. Was that what you expected? The last three or four years performance is quite good, but maybe I'm in terms of the you know, future perspective, future fo forecast of the performance, maybe some guys still need, maybe, still, you know, I don't know fear or like maybe not sure whether this the performance can keep growing. Actually, the, the point is that maybe the fact that the proposal is rejected is very good for the company. They really now I really really need to think about the changing some kind of like you know the tra the accountability and or uh, the transparency of their uh, what they are doing. If you look at the background of Mr. Steiner, we can say that. He's probably something like a professional. So he has really done, proposed lots of bylaw amendments throughout his career as a, as an, almost as an activist investor, if you, if you <laughs> yeah. might call him like that. I mean, he proposed his first proposal when, when he was how old? 10 Maybe or yeah, 10 or yeah. Yeah. yeah, so when he was a, a teenager. Exactly. So this suggests that we really have a professional here who is trying to, 
who is who knows what he's doing. Yeah. And secondly, I mean, applied materials already has a proxy access policy in place, which is actually quite similar to the one that Mr. Steiner proposed. So if we argue that the increase in shareholder value is due to proxy access in general, then we would have an argument that this increase in value has already been captured by the board voluntarily. I'm not that surprised that it is a relatively balanced outcome because it then becomes, ultimately boils down to a matter of personal judgment about whether you think this makes sense or not. Thanks a lot. So did you like the exercise? Did you learn something? Absolutely so. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs>